Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Hi, yes. how are you? you? Okay. I'm tired. Tired, yeah, me too. Well, but we have work to do. <laughs> and yes. we have English to study. <laughs> yes, uh, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody, welcome. Today we have Rufino Milcar, Claudia Janet, Luis Enriquez, Jenny Sanchez, and Luis Alonso Urias Garay. Okay, so we have to start. It's eight o'clock, so let's begin. I'm going to share the screen with you. It's a nice wallpaper that I have. Just let me start the presentation. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, okay, there you go. Can you see the blue screen? Yes, teacher. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Um, welcome once again. This is Inglés Intermedio, Modulo 3. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. It's Intermediate 3, Session 8. And today is October 20th, 2022. How time flies. Look at this. We're on October the 20th now. Wow. 10 more days, 11 more days. And that's the end of October, then November, then December. And after that, by 2022. Years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we start 2023. Yes. Wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, the most expensive time of the year is coming. <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> All right. Let's get started. Um, this day, in this class, you will learn and classify synonyms for common adjectives. Okay. Well, let's take a look. Um, what is a synonym or what is your definition of synonyms? Does anyone know? Synonyms? It's the, the different uh -huh. word, the different mm -hmm. word with same significate. The same meaning or very mm -hmm. similar meaning. The same meaning. Mm -hmm. the same meaning. Yeah. Amilcar is right. You have two words in the same language um, that are different. They have different spelling and everything, but the meaning is the same or is very, very close. You know, their meanings are very close. So what are we going to do here? You will learn and classify synonyms for common adjectives. Okay, yesterday, if you remember, we studied participle adjectives. Those are the adjectives that finish in ed and ing. So today we're going to study a different, well, some other adjectives and their synonyms. So um, this is one of the exercises that you can find in the platform. I just uh, did it in a different way. So what are you going to do? You need to classify the words. The words are absurd, bizarre, disgusting, dreadful, dumb, fabulous, fantastic, horrible, marvelous, odd, outstanding, ridiculous, silly, terrible, unusual, and weird. Those are the words right there. So what's your job right now? Okay, you need to classify these uh, 16 adjectives into the four different categories. And what are the categories? Awful, wonderful, stupid, and strange, okay? So again, they are awful, wonderful, stupid, and strange. Natalie, you have a very big cup, very big cup of coffee. <laughs> That's a lot of coffee right there. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, here's what you need to do. Again, you need to classify the adjectives. Let's um, take a look at this, okay? Um, you have, for example, this one, absurd. Give me a moment. Okay, you have absurd. What about this one? Where would you classify it? Awful, wonderful, stupid, or strange? What do you think? Stupid, teacher. Okay, uh, Lisa, stupid, Natalie? Stupid. Stupid, okay, let's see. Yeah, absurd goes in the first category. 
sorry, in the, in the third category, which is stupid. That's right. So that's what you need to do. Classify them in the four categories. You have four uh, entries in each. So what about, let's see, what is the second one? Bizarre. What about bizarre? Where will you put Strange. it? Strange. Strange. I hear. Jenny, what do you think? Strange. Strange. That's right. Bizarre goes in the strange category. Okay, what about the next one? Disgusting. What about disgusting? Awful. In the awful category. Awful. awful. Okay, let's see. That's right. Disgusting is in the awful category. What about dreadful? Mm -hmm. awful? awful. Awful. Okay. Uh -huh. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. Same category. Okay. Dreadful is horrible. Really bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it goes in the awful category. What about dumb? Stupid. I'm sorry? Stupid. Stupid. In the stupid category. Dumb. Okay. Dumb. That's right. What about fabulous? Wonderful. Wonderful. In the wonderful category. What about fantastic? The same. Wonderful. The same. Horrible. Horrible. Awful. 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 In the awful, awful category. That's right. It's off. Okay, that's horrible. What about marvelous? Wonderful. 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 That's right. How about odd? Uh, strange. Strange, um, I hear. That's right. Strange. Outstanding. Awful. 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 Are you sure? Awful? I don't sure, man. You're not sure. <laughs> okay. Well, let's hear different ideas. What about this one? Outstanding. Where will you put it? Strange. Strange. Are you sure? Oh, this is stupid. Stupid. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Outstanding. No. no. Wonderful. No. It's in the wonderful category. Outstanding means <laughs> sobre, Outstanding. sobresaliente. That's the meaning of oh, outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding. No, don't worry. Don't worry. No problem. Meaning the odd? Odd. It's, it's strange. Odd. Raro. Raro. Extraño. Uh -huh. Raro. Extraño. Uh -huh. I said, that's odd. Yes. Okay. When you find a situation unusual, you say, que raro. You say, that's odd. You can say that. Okay. What about this one? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. In the stupid category, stupid. of course. Okay. What about mm -hmm. silly? Simple. It's also stupid. Okay. Terrible. Terrible. Awful. Awful. The awful category. That's right. Okay. Good. Unusual. Strange. Strange, of course. <laughs> and finally, weird is the same. Strange. Strange, of course. And those are the words, okay? Awful. <laughs> In the awful category, you have disgusting, dreadful, horrible, terrible, okay? Dreadful, horrible, and terrible are very similar. Disgusting, it's a bit different. Disgusting is more like aqueroso, right? It's disgusting. Okay, then dreadful, horrible, and terrible are very similar. You have wonderful, which is like maravilloso. Okay, you have adjectives like fabulous, fantastic, marvelous, outstanding. In the next category, you have stupid, and you have adjectives like absurd, dumb, which is tonto. Okay, dumb, ridiculous, and silly. Just like tontito, right? Uh huh. Bobo. 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 Tontito. Uh huh. That's it. And finally, you have strange. You have the adjective bizarre, odd, unusual, and weird. There you go. Okay, we have completed this part. There wasn't much to it, so we have to continue with the relative clauses.
Okay, because I have uh, some more information and also some extra exercises for you to do. So mm -hmm. again, by the end of the class, uh, the participants will learn to use relative clauses in order to join two ideas into one. So again, this is a review from yesterday. Remember who is for people, only people, okay? Not things. A thief is a person who steals things. Do you know anybody who can play the piano? The man who called didn't give his name. The people who work in the office are very friendly. Now, which is for things, not people, okay? Which is only for things, not people. An airplane is a machine which flies. Emma lives in a house which is 100 years old. Okay. Now you have to remember, don't use which for people, which is only for things. Do you remember the woman who played the piano at the party? This is good. This is correct. But if you say, do you remember the woman which played the piano at the party? This is incorrect because you're talking about a woman. That means you need to use who, not which. Okay. We studied this yesterday, right? So not, there's nothing new to it. Next slide. That is for people or things. If you are not sure, if you don't know if you have to use who, or which you can use that, okay? An airplane is a machine that flies. Emma lives in a house that is a hundred years old. A thief is a person that steals things. Do you know anybody that can play the piano? The man that called didn't give his name. The people that work in the office are very friendly, okay? De nuevo, y lo tengo que decir aquí en español, esto solamente aplica para este tipo de relative clauses. El tema este en realidad es más amplio. Hay más de un tipo de relative clause. Estas que estamos viendo ahorita se conocen como defining relative clauses. Significa que la relative clause que está en este cuadro, justo en el que está en medio, es necesaria en la oración. Si usted la, la quita, de la oración, entonces ya no tiene sentido. Si yo digo, Emma lives in a house. Bueno, ok, todos vivimos en una casa, ¿verdad? Pero, ¿qué tiene de especial? Emma lives in a house that is a hundred years old. Ah, bueno, esa información es esencial para entender esta oración. Entonces, cuando eso sucede, tenemos un tipo de Relative clauses que se conoce como defining relative clauses. Cuando tenemos este tipo de relative clauses es que podemos ocupar that. Hay otras relative clauses que se pueden omitir y la oración siempre tiene sentido. Cuando eso sucede no podemos ocupar that. Así que no vayan a tomar esta regla como de oro. Digamos de decir, bueno, si no sé si es that, which o si es who, le voy a poner that. Para estas que estamos viendo, sí se puede. Pero hay otro tipo en el que no se puede hacer eso. Así que hay que tener un poquito de cuidado. Pero eso es tema para otra clase. So, remember, for people, who is more common than that? Do you know anybody who can play the piano? This is more common than, do you know anybody that can play the piano? Now, both sentences are correct. But one is more common than the other. The first one is more common than the second one. Okay. So what are we going to do right now? You're going to work in the breakout rooms. Okay. So we have 13 people. Siempre tenemos un número impar. Okay. We have an odd number. Ah, by the way, esa es otra cosa. Vimos la palabra odd, ¿verdad? Vocabulary. There is odd. Odd numbers and even numbers. Okay. Odd numbers include one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, uh, fifteen, seventeen, etc. etc. Right? Those are odd numbers. 
Even numbers include two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, etc. Ok, son vocabulary for you. No es que sean números raros, no, <laughs> son números impares. La palabra odd también significa impar. Odd numbers and even numbers. Right now we have a, ah, we have 14. Now we have an even number of students. We can work together perfectly. Okay, I'm going to form the breakout rooms. You're going to be working in pairs. Let's see, I'm going to form seven groups. Here we go. Okay, in the first room, you have Francisco Isaac and Paola Maria. Room two, Alejandra Magaña and Griselda Mendoza. Room three, Gladys Campos and Rufino Amilcar. Room four, Luis Alonso and Natalie Alejandra. Room five, Manuel Aristides and Jenny Sanchez. Room six, Claudia Yanet and Michelle Escobar. And in room seven, Luis Enriquez and Olivia Osorio. So I'm going to form the breakout rooms. But before, let me explain. This is very similar to an exercise we did yesterday. Choose from the boxes and write sentences. Follow the example. You say an architect, that's the first one. An architect is someone who designs buildings. You have it here. Number one, an architect is someone who, and then designs building. Es alguien que diseña edificios o construcciones, right? So what, that's what you need to do. Number two is a customer. Number three, a burglar. Number four, a coward. Number five, a tenant. Number six, a shoplifter. Number seven, a liar. And number eight, a pessimist. If you don't know the meaning of the words, you can use a dictionary, okay? Remember, you are on the internet right now. You can very easily look up the words on the internet. I'm going, uh, you have the breakout rooms now. I'm going to open them. Please, everybody, join your room and start working on the activity. <laughs> Okay, everybody, the exercise is now on WhatsApp. Please check WhatsApp and you will see the picture. Good evening. Okay. Remember, you need to communicate. <laughs> you need to work together. Okay. Number two, a customer is someone uh, who buys something from a store. That's right. Okay, very good. What about a burglar? Sorry, ahorita vengo entrando a la clase porque tenía problemas para entrar porque aquí está lloviendo super fuerte. Así oh. que ahorita me pongo al tanto. Okay, okay. Sí, sí. 
Ahorita quiero ayudarles a los compañeros que como que están teniendo un poquito de problema para entrar, igual que ayer. Sí, es que está lloviendo súper fuerte y yo creo que eso interfiere con la señal también. Uh -huh. Igual, ahorita me un montón de de El ejemplo dice: a burglar is someone who breaks into a house to steal things. Okay. Okay, a burglar is, I'm sorry, is someone who? Is someone who breaks into a house to steal things. That's correct. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm going to visit a different room now. There are six more. See you in a few minutes. to live in a house. <laughs> Which one? Hi, teacher. Hi. Hi. Number six. I shop lifter. Shop lifter. Shop, shop lifter. Shop lifter. Lifter. Shop lifter is someone who steals from a shop. Who steals from a shop. That's correct. Very good. ¿Qué es, qué es eso? Son de esos mañosos que van a las tiendas y sin que nadie se dé cuenta se roban las cosas. Ya, como, uh -huh. como hurtan. Uh -huh. Pero específicamente van a supermercados, a centros comerciales, a tiendas de conveniencia y sacan así las cosas escondiditas. That's a shop. Steal from a shop. Mm -hmm. a, a shoplifter is a person who steals from a shop. Okay, I'm going to visit a different room. See you in a few minutes. Bye. Do you, tenant? Una inquilina. What? Es que paga la renta de la vivienda en una casa. A That's tenant. A tenant. A tenant. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. A tenant is pay, pay rent to live. Uh, tenants. A tenant. Okay. A tenant. Is, is a person is? Who pays? Rem. Mm -hmm. It's a person who, who pay in... who pay rent to live in a house. Correct. A tenant is a person who pays rent to live in a house. Or mm -hmm. you can say a tenant is someone who pays rent to live in a house. Someone mm -hmm. of a person. Ah, because someone is alguien. You can ah, say okay. a person, una persona. Viene siendo ah, okay. casi que lo mismo. <laughs> In different words. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. All right. Okay. I have to visit more, more groups. See you later. Thank you. Hello. Have you finished? <laughs> okay, you, you say not yet. No not yet. yet. Okay. Okay. Number seven. Mm -hmm. A liar. Liar. Um, it doesn't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Is is someone is someone who, who, who doesn't tell the truth? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. A liar is someone who doesn't tell the truth. 
Correct. I have to go and visit other breakout rooms. See you later. Okay. See you later, teacher. See you later. Hello. Have you finished? Hello, teacher. Yep. Yes. Okay. What about number eight? Can you read it for me? Number eight mm -hmm. is um, a pessimist. A pessimist. Mm -hmm. Someone who expects the worst. A pessimist is someone who expects the worst to happen. <laughs> that's right. Okay. That's right. Very good. Yeah, okay. that's correct. Okay. Okay, I have to visit another okay. room. See you in a few okay. minutes. Okay. Hello, have you finished? Yes, teacher, finished. Okay. Yes, teacher. Can you help me with number, say, number, 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 number six, please? Uh, a shoplifter is someone who is still from a shop. That's correct. Very good. Okay, I have to visit one more room. See you in a few minutes. Hello. Have you finished? Olivia, Luis? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Have you finished? Uh, ya solo la última. Este, okay. Luis, no sé cómo que se tuvo problemas porque no lo he escuchado yo. Ah. Todo, pero he estado trabajando sola. No okay. sé si ahí está Luis. Ok, a lo mejor hay un problemita de conexión. Bueno. Ok. Um, ¿Cómo sería la última entonces? What about number eight? A pessimist. A pessimist. A pessimist is someone who... Como falta. Creo que me he confundido porque no, no. Ya hice hasta las siete, pero, pero no sé. Aquí ya no cuál ponerle al pesimista. Ok, don't worry, don't worry. Ok, don't worry, we're going to check the answers right now. Ok, vamos a revisar ahorita. Ok. All right, here we go. Ok, everybody, we have one minute to go back to the main session. Thirty five seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, let's take a look. Number one, an architect is someone who designs buildings. Number two, a customer. Who knows the answer? Customer? Olivia. And then Jenny. A uh, customer is someone who buys some clients. Buy something? Something. Oh, this oh. thing. Well, that's the idea, right? A customer is someone who 
buy something from a store, right? Yes. Uh -huh, that's the one. Yeah. A customer is someone who buys something from a store. That is correct. Thank you, Olivia. Uh, Jenny, please, number three, a burglar. A burglar is someone who breaks into a house to steal things. Correct. A burglar is someone who breaks into a house to steal things. That's a burglar. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Manuel Aristides, number four, please. Claudia will take number five and Jose Vega will take number six. Number number four, mm -hmm. a coward. Someone coward. Who mm -hmm. A coward is? is brave. Okay, a coward is? is? Uh -huh. oh, a coward is someone, someone who is not brave. Okay, a coward is someone who's not brave. That's right. Brave. Mm -hmm. Someone who's not brave. Very good. Thank you. Manuel Aristides. Claudia Yanet takes number five now. Okay. Attendant is someone who pays rent to live in a house. Mm -hmm. Attendant is someone who pays rent to live in a house. That is correct. Thank you, Claudia. Jose Vega will help us with number six. Solo que no se pronuncia la primera. <laughs> A shoplifter. A, a shoplifter uh, is someone who uh, steals from a shop. A shoplifter is someone who steals from a shop. Correct. Very good. Okay. Number Thank seven. Thank you, Jose. Who wants to participate? Number seven. Paola. A liar is someone who doesn't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Correct, just the pronunciation. A uh, liar. A liar is someone who liar. doesn't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Like Jim Carrey. Have you seen the movie with Jim Carrey? Liar, liar. It's a nice movie. So number eight, a pessimist. Wants to try the last one, please. Michelle. A pessimist is someone who expects the worst to happen. That's right. A pessimist is someone who expects the worst to happen. Very good. Okay. Nice. Let's continue. We have this exercise now. It's your turn. Make one sentence from two. You have to use who, that, or which. We're going to take the first one as an example. And I want you to help me. A girl was injured in the accident. She is now in hospital. Ahora, no vamos a decir a girl porque ya sabemos, ¿verdad? De quién estamos hablando. Estamos hablando de esta chica en específico. Así que en vez de decir a girl, vamos a decir the girl. Okay? The girl. Example. The girl who was injured in the accident, is now in hospital. ¿Sí? La chica que salió lastimada en el accidente está en el hospital. So you join the two sentences together right here. A girl was injured in the accident. That's sentence number one. Sentence number two, she is now in hospital. If you join both of them together, you have the girl who or that was injured in the accident is now in hospital. Now, you have to be very careful because remember, you can use who for people, you can use which for things, and you can use that when you are not sure for people or things. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Um, again, uh, you're going to work in breakout rooms, but this time a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger, okay? Not as small. This time in groups of uh, three, no, let's see, we have 17 participants. So yeah, groups of three right here. So that we can do this a little bit faster because this exercise is a bit more difficult than the other one. Okay. I'm going to create five groups only. Okay, room one, Alejandra Magaña, 
Natalie Alejandra, Olivia Osorio, and Rufino Amilka. Room two, Claudia Yanet, Paola Maria, Sonia Guadalupe, and Jenny Sanchez. Room three, Francisco Isaac, Michelle Escobar, and Roberto Tobar. Room four, Gladys Campos, Jose Vega, and Luis Enriquez. And in room five, Luis Alonso, Manuel Aristides, and Morena Medina. Everybody, I want you to work on the other four sentences. Okay, but work together. So, acuérdense siempre, ¿verdad? comuníquense en el grupo, no estén ahí calladitos, porque si no, se pierde el sentido. So, I'm going to open the breakout rooms. Please join them and complete the other four items. Hey everybody, please join your breakout room and we're going to begin the exercise. The exercise is in WhatsApp now. The second. Yeah. Who, who start? <laughs> Anybody may begin. The second. I think that a uh, waiter. Uh -huh, the waiter. The waiter. Uh -huh. Ah, the waiter. Who, who was in politics in fashion? The waiter. The waiter. Ah. Natalie nos dijo hay una versión que si bien es gramaticalmente correcta y es posible decirla en la vida real. Eh, tal vez no sea la mejor opción. Tal vez si jugamos un poquito con el orden ahí, nos quede algo un poco no. más. The waiter Ajá. who served us. Served, Ajá. Served The us. waiter who served us. Served, served, served us. Uh -huh. Served us. Ajá. Uh -huh. Served us. Who. Oh, no. Ya ocupó who. Ajá, yeah. The waiter who served so the server has uh, who was that 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 no. was cuidado cuidado mm -hmm. no podemos ocupar who y luego ocupar that was sorry mm -hmm. decimos the waiter who served us who was in politics Ajá, pero no podemos decir otra vez who porque ya lo ocupamos. Eh, Amir Carlos dijo, the waiter who served us. Ajá. ¿Qué seguiría ahí? Was. 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 Impolite. 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 And impatient. Así, no, así nos quedaría. The waiter who served us was impolite and impatient. El mesero que nos atendió era maleducado e impaciente. Natalie nos había dado otra alternativa. Nos había dicho, the waiter who was impolite and, and impatient served us. Es posible, solo que eso significaría el mesero que, es, que era... Eh, se me olvidó la palabra. <laughs> el mesero que era. Eh, I forgot the word. This is impolite in Spanish. <laughs> educado. Maleducado. Ajá. Maleducado. El mesero que era maleducado e impaciente nos atendió. O sea, es posible también, pero queda mejor de la otra manera, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. 
Sería the waiter who served us was uh -huh. impolite and impatient. Ok, el mesero que nos atendió era maleducado e impaciente. Was impolite. Ajá, was impolite and impatient. Acuérdense, ¿verdad? Que solamente hay una relative clause adentro. Por lo tanto, el relative pronoun, me estoy refiriendo al who, el that o el which, solo puede aparecer una vez. Si aparece dos veces, ajá, en dos lugares diferentes, ahí algo anda mal. No more. Okay. Okay. I'm going to visit a different room now. I understand. Who was a waiter server who was in policy in police and in patient who was a waiter server of who was Impolite and impotent. Así. Impolite and impatient. Impolite. Ajá. ¿Cómo les quedaría? Quiero escuchar. Veamos. The server. The waiter server. The waiter. Falta algo ahí. Uh, the waiter. Who? Server of uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. was impolite and impatient. Correct. The waiter who served us was impolite and impatient. El mesero que nos atendió era maleducado e impaciente. Así que the waiter who served us was impolite and impatient. Okay. okay, I'm going okay, to okay. Uh, visit another another room. Give me a second. No, hay que, hay que escribirnos para quedar el grupito. ¿Verdad, teacher? Hi, teacher. Hi. Have you Hi. finished? Yeah. Wow, very fast. What about very number fast. three? Ay, compañera. Nos quedamos callados. Ya terminamos, teacher. Ya, ya. Ajá, la tres. Y ya, teacher. The building, the building which was destroyed in the fire last year was rebuilt last month. Good. Okay. The building which was destroyed in the fire last year was rebuilt last month. Excellent. I have to go into a different room now. See you. See you. <laughs> Hello, have you finished? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Yes, teacher. Okay, what about number four? It, we have yeah. the people that were arrested last night were released this morning. Great, correct. The people that were arrested last night were released this morning. Good. Okay, I have to go into a different room. See you in a few minutes. But teacher, teacher. Yes, yes, yes. Teacher, I have a question. Sure. Uh, in, in, in this sentence, we are talking about people, mm -hmm. it, not just a person. It's people. correct to say who, or yes. in this case, uh huh? Yes, you can use who. Who is for people in general, singular or plural? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Como futuro. I'm sorry? Como futuro, teacher, perdón la pregunta. Futuro. No, no, sí. ocupamos who para las personas. Puede ser singular o plural. Puede ser una persona o varias. Ah, oh, ok. Uh -huh. Ok, como es que. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh -huh.
Hello, have you finished? Yes. Yes, okay. What about number five? Mm -hmm. About number five. Hola. The, the bus ah. who the bus which that goes to the airport it comes very hello. The, the bus which goes to the airport. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Gladys por ahí, José Vega, ¿quién nos ayuda? Ok, no, no tenemos la número 5. Me dijeron que habían terminado, entonces por eso les pregunté. No, teacher, es que no, okay. yo, no estuve, yo no estuve en la clase de ayer, entonces uh -huh. yo ahorita estoy ahí tratando de comprender para qué uh -huh. estamos haciendo. Ok, ok. Bueno, eh, vamos a revisar el ejercicio ahorita, de todas maneras. Eh, no se preocupe, vamos a ver esto con un poquito más de detenimiento. Eh, no sé si ha tenido oportunidad de ver el video también, que lo he quedado ahí desde anoche. No, Tal vez no por era... falta de tiempo, ¿verdad? Hay 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 mucho yo in this day. You're very busy. Oh, yeah. Ok. Bueno, pero ya viene el fin de, tal vez el fin de nos podemos poner un poquito yes, eh, yes. Ajá, al día. Oh, okay. Yes. ok. Ok. I'm going to exit the room now. Everybody, I have just closed the breakout rooms. I want everybody to join the main meeting. We start in 50 seconds. Okay, let's take a look. What about number two? A waiter served us, he was impolite and impatient. Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing the screen. Okay, now I'm sharing the screen. Okay, number two, who has number two, please? Francisco. A waiter served us. He was impolite and impatient. A waiter uh, served us. Uh -huh. uh -huh. The waiter who served us was impolite and impatient. Yeah. The waiter, sorry. The waiter who served us or the waiter that served us was impolite and impatient. That's correct. Thank you, Francisco. What about number three? Volunteers, please. Let's give it a try. Number three. Nobody wants to try. Come on. Okay, Michelle. And then Manuel. The building. 
the building in which was destroyed in the fire last year, it was rebuilt last month. Okay, the building which was destroyed in the fire last year? Was rebuilt last month. Was rebuilt last month. Yeah, there you have it. The building which or that was destroyed in the fire last year was rebuilt last month. Good. Uh, Manuel Aristides, and then I saw somebody else raising their hands. Okay. Okay, okay. Manuel Aristides, number four, please. Okay. Uh, the people who were arrested last night are where released this morning. Okay, the people who were arrested last night mm -hmm. uh -huh. are where um, are where released the morning. Are where no, no, ahí tenemos una palabra de más. Ah, solo sería are released. De hecho, no es la otra. Uh, where. Ah, okay, where. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so, okay. the people okay. who or that were arrested last night were released this morning. Were released. Es que teníamos duda con, con, con eso, si lo poníamos el are o no, porque como they are. Ah, no, no. En este caso es they were. Es la forma they en were. pasado. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. okay. The people who were arrested last night were released this morning. Okay. okay, thank you, Manuel. Thank you. Amilcar, do you have number five? Uh, the bus, the bus which goes to the airport runs every half hour. The bus which, oops, which goes to the airport runs every half hour. Okay, very mm -hmm. good. Excellent. Okay, I have two more exercises, but I don't think we'll have the time to cover them. So instead, we're going to go into, where is it? Um, the web, the website. Okay, everybody, it's the platform. So we're just going to uh, take a look at the midterm, which we need to complete, okay? Vamos a darle un vistazo, vamos a explicar el ejercicio, no lo vamos a resolver porque es un examen, pero sí vamos a explicarlo por lo menos, para que nos quede bien claro y podamos hacerlo ya con calma. Si no lo han hecho, algunos creo que ya lo resolvieron. Ok. Here's the midterm. Okay, so what do you have to do? First is the listening section. Instructions, listen to the conversations, choose the correct answers. Okay, escuche las conversaciones, escoja las respuestas correctas. So you need to play the track right here. You can control the volume right there and you need to select the right answer. The Egyptian pyramids are buried in sand, were built by Napoleon, are not open to tourists. There is only one correct answer. Great Zimbabwe is on the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia, is the largest monument in Southern Africa, or is a modern city with 20,000 people. Easter Island is close to Chile and Tahiti, Tahiti has some large statues or has an unusual sculpture museum. Number four, the city where the woman lived is located where two rivers meet, is known in English as the Golden City, or is over 5,000 years old. Una ventaja de este ejercicio, de este tipo de exámenes, que usted puede escucharlo cuantas veces quiera, ¿verdad? Fuera en un salón de clases, solo pone un par de veces y ya estuvo. Pero aquí no, usted lo puede oír y si no entendió, lo puede volver a oír y así. Okay, so for the next part, there's rewriting sentences. Rewrite the sentences as passive sentences with by. Follow the example. Prince recorded the song Purple Rain. The song Purple Rain was recorded by Prince. Entonces, muy parecido a los ejercicios que nosotros estábamos viendo la semana pasada, si se acuerdan. Donde veíamos el verb, el, the verb tense, the subject, the object, y luego hacíamos el cambio. Es el mismo proceso. So George Lucas directed the Star Wars movies. Entonces decimos que las películas de Star Wars fueron dirigidas por George Lucas, ¿verdad? Ocupen el by, muy importante. 
Tim Berners-Lee developed the World Wide Web. Ian Fleming wrote the James Bond novels. Gustave Eiffel designed the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Un consejo que les quiero dar acá es, tengan mucho cuidado. Si ustedes eh, no conocen el past participle de alguno de los verbos, pues consulten una lista de irregular verbs. Les digo esto porque es muy común cometer el error de que en lugar de utilizar el past participle en la oración pasiva, ocupan el verbo en pasado, o sea, la forma en pasado, que no es la misma. En, algún, en algunas ocasiones es igual, pero en muchas otras es diferente. Así que asegúrense, por favor, de utilizar siempre la forma en past participle. Se ocupa el verb be y el verbo en past participle. Súper importante, ¿verdad? Ok, what's next? Ah, part two. Rewrite the sentences using who, that, or which. Justo lo que estamos viendo. Remember to add a period at the end. Póngale el puntito al final. Ok. Comedies are a type of movie. They usually make people laugh. Entonces, ahí, las comedias son un tipo de película que hacen reír a las personas. Eso, pero en inglés, por supuesto. No le puedo dar la respuesta. Pero tiene una idea, que es justo lo que estamos haciendo hoy. Mucho cuidado en este ejercicio, sobre todo de rewriting sentences, porque como las respuestas ya están determinadas, si usted escribe algo, una palabra que usted escriba mal, ya se la va a tomar como mala. Así que antes de darle ahí enviar, eh, asegúrese que todo esté bien correcto, que no haya dobles espacios entre las palabras, que no haya un espacio al principio de la oración, que no haya un espacio al final de la oración, que lleve el punto, todos esos detallitos, asegúrese que estén bien antes de dar enviar. Si tiene que utilizar un apóstrofe, acuérdese que es la tecla que está a la par del cero, porque a veces ponemos una coma en español pensando que es apóstrofe, pero no es un apóstrofe, así que eso lo puede tomar como malo también. Ok. Um, there you go. Next part is completing sentences. Cargue. Ok. Complete the sentences. Use the passive form of the verbs. This is very simple. You just choose. English is spoke or English is spoken in Australia and New Zealand. Select the correct form. Ok. What's next? Let me check. Ah, uh, well, you have Spanish and Portuguese are taught or are, are taught it, dice acá, in this school. Rice is grew or rice is grown in many Asian countries. In part two, complete the sentences, use the simple past or past continuous of the verbs. Esto lo vimos también, ¿verdad? Past simple or past continuous. I met my best friend while I was taking a business course or I was meeting my best friend while I was taking a business course. Remember that there is an action in progress and that's past continuous. And there is another action that interrupts that action. That's usually in past simple. So don't get confused right there. You'll do the same in number two and number three. Then circle the words. Choose the correct word. One of the crops uh, grown in Guatemala is cattle, coffee, or shrimp. There is only one logical option. Okay, solo una es lógica. Así que hay que elegir. What are manufactured in California? Chickens, microchips, or oysters? Solo una es lógica. Así que elijamos ahí. De nuevo, si tiene alguna pregunta sobre vocabulario, consulte un diccionario. Muchas veces, porque no sabemos una palabra, nos sale mal el ejercicio entero. A veces vamos y decimos, quiero ver chickens, microchips, oyster, a, a, a saber qué es, pero bueno, no, no tengamos esa actitud, porque a veces nos da un poquito de pereza buscar la palabra. Si no sabemos qué es, busquémosla, porque esa palabra puede ser clave para resolver el ejercicio. Finally, there's a reading. Look at the situations. For each example, write the number of the appropriate reason. Oh, no me sale la imagen acá. No sé si le sale a usted. Ah, ahí va, está cargando. Ah, ah, ah. Un poco lento. Bueno, <laughs> aquí está. The truth about lying. La verdad sobre mentir. So read the text, please. And uh, 
read the questions and select the right choice. Okay? That's the midterm. Acuérdense que este midterm tiene que estar resuelto eh, ya esta semana. Así que yo le recomendaría resuélvalo ahora si no lo ha hecho. Y si no, pues resuélvalo mañana lo más pronto que pueda. Porque ya para esta semana esto tiene que estar resuelto porque eh, se toma como la mitad de la nota del, del nivel. Así que hay que hacerlo. Que no, no lo vaya a dejar para la otra semana porque le puede afectar. De acuerdo. And that's it. It's nine and two. Okay, everybody. I don't know if you have any questions. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, Natalie. And in the section three. Section the three. Number... Let her mm -hmm. see. No, no. Number three, the section two. Ah, uh -huh. the, the section before the midterm. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Okay. And the number 10. Number 10. Vamos, que cargue. Knowledge check. Okay. This part. The, mm -hmm, yes, the second and third. Mm -hmm. Don't understand. Okay. Uh, let's see who is Ang Lee. He's a movie director. He made the film Hulk. So he's a movie director who made the film Hulk. Lo que vimos hoy, verdad? Or he's a movie director that made the film Hulk. Mm -hmm. Who is Ang Lee? He's a movie director. He made the film Hulk. Have you heard of Pirates of the Caribbean? Yes, it's an action movie. It starts, stars Johnny Depp. So, ¿qué tenemos? Y vamos a ver, le ponemos todo. <laughs> Pero no estarme equivocando. It's an action movie. Como estamos hablando de una película, no de una persona, decimos which... Stars Johnny Depp. Let's get out of here. Yes, it's an action movie which stars, starts, I'm sorry. No, not starts with a T, with stars Johnny Depp. La cual protagoniza Johnny Depp. The next one. What's Chicago? It's a musical about a girl. She becomes a celebrity. So we talk about the girl. You say, it's a musical about a girl who becomes a celebrity. Así nos quedaría. It's a musical about a girl who becomes a celebrity. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the last? The last one. I get the two and the four. Two and four. Ah, I'm sorry. Okay. Did you enjoy John Grisham's latest novel? Aquí tengo una. Bueno, al parecer no está acá. <laughs> Pero aquí tenía una. Yes, it was a great book. It was hard to put down. Lo único que metemos acá, no sé si hay que poner yes. Bueno, pongámoslo. It was a great book. Y como estamos hablando de un libro, which was hard to put down. Era difícil cerrar el libro, ¿verdad? Ponerlo aparte, tan emocionante que estaba. So, it was a great book, which was hard to put down. Y hablando de eso, sí, las novelas de John Grisham son buenas. Así que si tienen oportunidad de leer alguna una vez, yo recomiendo. Solo he leído una y me súper encantó. Ok. So, uh, if you don't have any more questions, we're going to finish the class right here. Everybody, please complete the midterm. Hagan eso si es posible hoy, si no mañana, pero que no me pase, ¿de acuerdo? Thank you very much, and I will see you on Monday. Okay. Okay, have a great weekend. I see you Monday. See you on Monday. See you. See you Monday. Monday. <laughs>